Hello, today we're looking at amounts of substances in chemical reactions and in fact we're going to be calculating masses of either reactants or products in chemical reactions. We do need to have balanced formula equations. We need balanced formula equations in order to do this and here we've got an example of one of those reactions. So we've got hydrogen reacting with oxygen and that will give us water. And we can see that's balanced there. Now, this balanced equation actually gives us a lot of information. So we can figure out what kinds of things it's telling us. Now, the first thing it tells us is that we have two molecules of hydrogen. They are reacting with one molecule of oxygen. Now, we don't usually write the one in front of the oxygen or one in front of the substance if there's only one but we can put that in just so we can see. And then we end up with two molecules of water. So we've got two, one, two in terms of the number of molecules. We can also expand that idea to the idea of moles, and we've looked at moles in a previous video, but this tells us that two moles of hydrogen react with one mole of oxygen to produce two moles of water. So again, we've got the ratio of two to one to two. Not only can we look at that ratio, but we can also look at the formula masses for the different compounds. So for hydrogen, we have a relative atomic mass of one and oxygen is 16. Those are taken from the periodic table. And we have for hydrogen, two times one times two. The one times two is in brackets there. And if you're not sure what's going on here in terms of working out formula masses, you could check out the video on formula masses and how to do that. So it's four for hydrogen. For oxygen, it's two times 16. Remember that little two applies to the oxygen. So it's two times 16, and that gives us 32. And for water, we have two times, and in brackets, there's two hydrogens and one oxygen, so that gives us a total of 18. So it's 2 times the 18 there, that gives us a total of 36. Okay, now if we added up the formula masses of the products and the reactants, they would be the same. But we can put these ideas together, the fact that these substances are reacting in ratios to work out masses of reactants or products. And let's take a look at some examples. So here's the first example here. It's, saying, it's asking what mass of magnesium chloride is made from 142 grams of chlorine and it's given us a balanced equation. So we want to know the mass of magnesium chloride and we know the mass of chlorine. So we could put that in as a note just to help us remember. So 142 grams of chlorine and we don't know the mass of magnesium chloride. We can ignore the magnesium in this equation and just work with these two compounds here that the question is asking us about. So the first way we can do this is to use the idea of ratios. So we would look at the formula mass for chlorine, and it's 71 in this case, because it's two times 35.5. And for the magnesium chloride, it's 24 plus two times 35.5. And that gives us an answer of 95. So we can see that if we converted that to grams, we would know that 71 grams of chlorine would make 95 grams of magnesium chloride. But we don't have 71 grams. We have, as given in the question, we have 142 grams. And we don't know the mass of magnesium chloride. So what mass would 142 make? Well, what have we done to the 71 to get to 142? We have doubled it, so that's times 2 and therefore we would also double the 95, and that would give us an answer of 190. So we would get 190 grams of magnesium chloride from 142 grams of chlorine in this balanced chemical reaction, or from this balanced chemical equation. Right, but the way I actually want us to do it for the rest of this video is to use this method here. We're going to look at the idea that it's a ratio of moles when we are looking at reactants and products. So we could say that the moles of chlorine is in a ratio with the moles of magnesium chloride. And we know from a previous video that moles is mass over relative atomic mass or relative formula mass. You might remember the grams over the rams technique we talked about before. So we've got for chlorine, the moles are 142, which is the mass, divided by the relative formula mass, which is 71. That's just 2 times 35.5. So we get 142 divided by 71 is equal to, we could treat the ratio sign as an equal to, to in order to work this out. It's the mass of the 
magnesium chloride divided by its relative formula mass. We don't know the mass of the magnesium chloride. We could work out 142 over 71 is 2, and this ends up, if we re rearrange the equation, as 2 times 95, which gives us 190 grams, same as we got previously. Okay, so this is another method, and we're going to use the second method for the next two questions. So if you want to have a go at this one by yourself, you can, but if not, what are we trying to work out? Well, we're trying to work out the maximum mass of magnesium oxide produced from 2 grams of magnesium. So if we just write that into the equation, this is a reaction of H2O in its gaseous form, so it's steam. So we have 2 grams of magnesium, and we don't know the mass of magnesium oxide. So what we can do is use our moles method, and for magnesium and magnesium oxide, we can do the calculation. Remember, we can ignore the H2O because we're not doing a calculation based on the H2O. The moles of magnesium are, is mass over the relative atomic mass, and for magnesium oxide, it's mass over relative formula mass. And we have, for the mass of magnesium, it's 2. The, formula, the uh, atomic mass is 24. That's given to us in the question. These will always be given to you in the question. If not, you can find it on the periodic table. We don't know the mass of magnesium oxide, but we know the formula mass of magnesium oxide. It's 16, or 24 plus 16. And that gives us an answer of 40. And then we could just do the calculation. So 2 divided by 24 is 0 0.083. And then we don't know the mass, but we know 40 as the formula mass. So we could do 0 0.083 times 40 will give us 3.33 grams. And that's the answer. That's how much mass of magnesium oxide is produced from 2 grams of magnesium in this balanced chemical reaction. Here's another one for you to try for yourself. So give that a go. And we could go through the answer afterwards. Okay, so we're trying to work out the maximum mass of iron 3 chloride that can be produced from 11.2 grams of iron. So our iron chloride is there. We don't know the mass of that. That's what we're trying to work out. And we've got 11.2 grams of iron. So we would use our moles uh, ratio method again. So we work out for iron the moles and we work out for iron chloride the number of moles. So for iron, it would be mass over relative atomic mass, grams over rams, if you remember from a previous video. And then for the iron chloride, it's mass over relative formula mass. The mass of iron we know from the question, that's 11.2. And then the formula mass, we must include the 2 here. So it would be 2 times 56, which gives us an answer of 112. And then that gives us mass over the relative formula mass for iron chloride. Now be very careful with this one because this is one that students uh, get a little bit confused with. That 2 applies to the whole iron chloride, but the little 3 applies only to the chlorine. Okay, so this is a slightly tricky way, a slightly tricky, tricky example of working out uh, formula mass, but what we would do is we do 56 plus 3 times 35.5, and then all of that we would double because of the 2 in front of the formula. So that would give us 2, and in brackets, 56 plus 106.5. And then if we work out, uh, work out the answer from that, obviously we would use our calculator just to be sure. We are allowed to use the calculator in the exam. The answer that we get is 325, so on the bottom there we could put 325. And then if we do 11.2 over 112, that gives us 0 0.1 times our 3.25 when we rearrange the equation, and that gives us an answer of 32.5 grams. So 11.2 grams of iron will produce 32.5 grams of iron chloride when reacted with chlorine. Okay, so there's three examples of working out masses of reactants and or products. Hopefully uh, you've got the idea of how that works now. So that's it for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.